people. Listen up, I'm excited because this is an important video. I hear things in this video you never wanna do unless you want your build to be absolutely booty cheeks. Now, I've been doing a lot of talking over the last few weeks since I've made this new slasher primary sharpshooter secondary. A lot of people chiming in, giving me their advice. I've been playing against a lot of other competitive top teams, man. We've been playing some fun pro-am games, but this applies to the park as well. My guys at NBA 2K Lab, Dish me some info just like that. And it's some very vital info. They said agent people might want to know something like this. So shout out to NBA 2K Lab. So, hey, first things first, there's a lot of popular builds like playmaking primary, sharpshooting secondary. Pure sharp's probably the most popular in the game. Slashing primary, rebounding secondary. Flip that, that's also a popular build. Like there's a million different ways you can dominate, right? So just pick your poison, man. Which build is most fun for you? If you're playing Prime or Park, it might make sense to hit up a couple friends if you have that play the game and then try and build a around them because sometimes even though I love this build slashing primary sharpshooting secondary it makes more sense for my team if I'm playing with my pure sharpshooter and so just know that going into this but let's start off with height without without going into detail because I don't think it's really necessary the tall you make him the slower he is but you'd be surprised with this new 610 build I was just down low of course it depends on what animations you have but you start to make everything. I promise you, if you give me a guy that's six foot seven and under, and this is my 6'10 slasher, I'm eating food. I'm destroying him without a doubt. I don't care if he's a lockdown. I'm going up on him, regardless of the attributes, just because of height, it plays such a big factor in making shots. If you're a taller shooter, you shoot through more contests. If you're down low and you're dunking on folks or you're doing contested layups, the taller you are, the better you are, again, at the subtraction of speed. Did that make sense? It probably did or catch up. But here's where it gets interesting. There's a wingspan debate. I've been talking to folks that said, Agent, why would you max out your wingspan? You know, your animations take longer to do this or to do that. And some people keep it in the middle. Some people are ridiculous and they make it shorter and they got little T-Rex arms walking around like this. But my guys at NBA 2K Lab gave me the numbers, right? So let's get into the numbers. Oh, wow. Oh man, how'd I miss? Good yeah. rebound. Hey, coach. Ah! <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna look at is the defensive shot contest which means if i'm pulling up for a shot here and there's a guy closing me out what's the difference in terms of me making my shot percentage wise if he has a minimum or a maximum wingspan if a guy is closing out with a maximum wingspan is there a higher percentage chance that i missed that exact shot right there and the numbers say there is yeah y'all can look at the details if you want again i'm gonna leave the link in the description but pay close attention because if i have a minimum wingspan and i'm pulling up for a shot at a light contest i have a 24 millisecond green window now that green window drops to 18 if the guy has a maximum wingspan so without a doubt you look at the make percentage there's a seven percent drop between minimum and maximum if you have a maximum wingspan you're better at closing out the opponents Again, the same goes for rebounding. NBA 2K Lab dish me the numbers like that. They said, if you have a minimum wingspan, you get a 32.5%, which jumps to a 67.5% chance of getting the rebound with maximum. You literally double your chances of getting the rebound just by maximizing wingspan for obvious reasons. If a shot goes up and I click triangle and I have longer arms, I'm going to get it. That's what makes sense logically, am I correct? Come on, if you're a rebounder and you're not maxing out your wingspan, you're doing something wrong. I literally just had a debate literally like an hour ago and I was saying, yo, max out your wingspan, it'd be better for dunks. And my guy Purple's talking to me, he said, nah, mine's his default, I swear it's better for dunks. But we're looking at the numbers, right? NBA 2K Lab is talking to me. They said a minimum wingspan, 33.05% dunk success rate. And that jumps to a 45% if you max it out. Again, all the numbers are there if you want to look in close detail, but without a doubt, maximum is the wave. Now, there is one thing that's very difficult to quantify that might play a factor. If you have longer arms and you're doing dunks, there's also a possibility that you can get blocked because you're extending the ball so far. So that might be, you know, a debate. It's very difficult to put that in numbers. But again, if you're choosing the right dunk animations, you really shouldn't be in a situation where you're cocking the ball all the way back regardless. You know, that's a pretty reckless thing to do, especially on a fast break in a competitive game, unless you really want to get blocked, right? Yo, that guy's arms, man. Look at the, my player's arms, man. Like, it takes him 20 seconds for him to get the ball up on the layup, man. Man, y'all scratch our knees, man, long arms. That's why I ain't touch my arms on this dude. You didn't max your arms? Nope. I didn't max my arms either. I maxed my, I maxed my, uh, I yeah. maxed my shoulders. I didn't max my arms, though. 
Instagram. You don't see why his his arms look like some fucking SpongeBob arms. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean for me it makes sense to max out the wingspan a majority of people do but there's always that odd ball that has its own reasons for keeping it default but under no circumstances should anybody ever minimize their wingspan i know it says your open shot three goes up but don't be ridiculous all right The next thing is the weight debate. Now, this can go either way, man. I'm telling y'all, I maxed out the weight on my 6'10 small forward. I believe he's 270 something. Now, if you max out your weight, trust me, you'll be able to feel the difference. Your player will feel more sluggish and slow, and that might not be what you're going for. But for me, I came off playing with a pure sharpshooter for a couple months. And I'll, every time people get blow by animations, and regardless of my defensive position, people are getting by me. So in terms of strength, you will have way more strength if you max out your strength. And what? That's obviously, Agent, you just said, anyway. You'll have way more strength if you max out your weight. And for me, defensively, I knew that was gonna be really important, man. I'm gonna get mine offensively, right? Especially with a slasher build, I'll end up getting my blow bys regardless. They're in the game. And I don't think Mike Poyang is gonna disco tech and patch the sliders anytime soon, right? So, I, I'm, I'm gonna take advantage of it, of course. I'm gonna get my blow bys, but defensively, is really where the weight comes into factor because if you can stand your ground and get bump back animations and push the opponents back because you maxed out your weight and you have more strength, then it's a W. Now, if you're a player that relies on speed to get a majority of his buckets, then it might not make sense to do that. You might wanna keep it medium, but keep in mind defensively, you're gonna be a liability on your team if every second, regardless of your defensive position, people are just getting by you, right? So for me, I just know there's two sides to basketball, man. If you can get a stop on defense, you may get in a bucket on offense a whole lot easier, especially when you're on the fast break. I would recommend either keeping it average or if you feel like it and you really wanna beef up your defense, do what I did and max out your weight. Of course, it's gonna be different for each build. You know, if you're like a playmaking sharpshooter, you know, it's gonna be different than if you were a slasher. If you're a big man and you know you're gonna be going up against people with max strength, you almost always wanna max out your strength. If you're a point guard, you can get away with keeping it down the middle or you can max it out depending on what you're feeling like. A quick little update, uh, you guys know I got my slashing primary, sharpshooting secondary. I haven't showed them to y'all in a little bit just because the badge grind has been putting in work. We got some gold badges. A whole lot of silver and bronze maxed out badges. I've been running reps with him, man. I got all the animations I was looking for. You know, the dunk animation is looking clean. I was getting some reps in on the Pro-Am, man. We were playing some comp teams, took some dubs, and took some L's, man. It's been fun. Tomorrow, I'm playing in a tournament, so I've been trying to prepare this guy. I don't know if he's tournament ready just yet for me. But I've been hitting from the hash, man. This slasher primary, but, you know, I played a game. We, we punked a comp team by a cool 20 points. And I dead shot the ball from here with this build to close out the game. Let me, let me, right here, bro. And it was an all white, but it's still hit. And I was like, damn. This might seem like a wildly irrelevant thing, but left-handed and right-handed players is actually a pretty big difference. Now, I don't know if this, the word big is the right word, but keep this in mind. If I'm a right-handed player, I like to receive the ball on the left. So if the point guard is in the middle of the three-point line, I like to be on this side because I can immediately go up for my shot, right? If the point guard is in the middle of the three-point line and I'm over here with the right-handed player, I have to turn my body before I shoot, which means I have to pause or I get a leaning shot. Now, you guys have watched my videos. You went to NBA 2K Lab. You know, if you do a leaning shot, your percentages plummet. If you like to stand on the right side of the court, make a left-handed player. And if you like to stand on the left side of the court, make a right-handed player. It's not gonna make the world of difference, but I just know for me, I tell my team, I prefer to stay on this side with this build. All my other builds are left-handed, so I prefer to stay on the right side, just so I don't have to turn my body. There's always gonna be that turn when you're standing at the hash, especially if you're a sharpshooter or you're supposed to be shooting from this kind of limitless range distance. They made me lean. You see why I'm hesitant to pull up for those quick shots? Like, that leaning shot is not a good percentage, man. I mean, aside from that, like, there might be small differences in terms of when you release the ball because of your cue. 
But, you know, I've been using the same jump shots. I haven't noticed any huge differences that made me switch up a jump shot just because this is my first player on 2K18 that's been right-handed. Yo, trust me, you can go on days and days about debating which build is best for certain situations. Yo, if somebody's using this build, how do I counter? Which builds do we use? Which combo builds? We're playing pro or You know, I'm just playing by myself. Which build should I use here? There's a million ways you can dominate. All right? Of course, some are going to be more effective than others. And uh, it really depends on your play style, man, because I enjoy this. But there's going to be some guys like, yo, it's way too slow with this build, especially when you max out the weight. So it's on you. So anyway, just don't make the weight mistakes. Don't make the height mistakes. Don't make the wing spam mistakes. And uh, of course, you know, the preference between right and left. Do your thing. I don't know why. It's, I mean, I get that I like it's kind of complicated, but sometimes I feel like it's overly complicated for no reason. And if it wasn't for NBA 2K Lab, to be honest, all of this would just be theory. So it's really dope to see it in numbers. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe. If you guys are new, I'm going to catch you guys in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace.